The protests are still on. Uh, the youths have vowed that every Thursday and Tuesdays they will be still uh, coming out in the streets until they will force the current government to to be dissolved or, or, or so. But, but there are a lot of things that have happened the last uh, couple of uh, days, especially from Tuesday onward. Tuesday has been uh, can be considered to be one of the most uh, unprecedented days in Kenya's uh, history of protest for a number of reasons. One of which was on that day, the, the youthful protesters were able to occupy the parliament. Uh, the, uh, the defense of the parliament was, was, um, was breached and the members of parliament had to run for their lives using the underground panel so that they will not be uh, attacked by, 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 the, the, by the protesters. So since then, there's been, um, there's been tremendous change around how the bill has been discussed one of which was on that night when uh, when the parliament was invaded on Tuesday night, the president addressed the nation and he had vowed to go after the people who uh, he considered to be the organizers, the funders, and the criminal elements that, according to him, had hijacked uh, the peaceful protests that these youths have engaged in. And But on Wednesday, the president, again, uh, around in the afternoon, he addressed the nation and he accepted to withdraw the bill Totally. So all the clauses that are in the bill are considered to be nullified at the moment. And therefore, the bill was returned back to, to the parliament for it to be debated. And uh, in the in meantime, uh, the appropriation bill 2024 is supposed to go into place. The president again put in place, he called for dialogue with the youth and he he's uh, calling for multi-stakeholder engagement with different categories of people who are interested in, in addressing the problems that uh, the youth have, have raised. He also vowed to fight corruption. He also vowed to reduce expenses that have been one of the key reasons for the protest to go on. So he vowed to cut uh, expenses in, pres in the office of the president and a number of other branches of the government so that the budget that will go in will be much more leaner uh, in addressing the problem that the youths have raised. Uh, on Thursday last week, uh, the protesters were still back on the street despite these concessions that were being made. Overall, while one can consider that there's a big win for the protesters, uh, the protesters still are in the street. They feel that the only way for these uh, problems of, 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 of uh, governance to be addressed is for, for the current president and his regime and his government to go. So this is the situation at the moment that uh, we are in, uh, despite the fact that the, the, the government had conceded quite much to the demands that the youth have made before. Mm. So we saw that during the last process, the use of force by the police was heavily criticized. And we also saw that the army was also brought in to help handle tensions. You know, what has police and, you know, basically army and police presence been like these days after President Ruto's uh, announcement? So on, on, on Tuesday last week, uh, very quickly, the cabinet minister for uh, defense uh, released a gazette memo in which deployment of the Kenya Defense Force was, 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 was uh, sanctioned. And uh, on the morning of Wednesday, the parliament hurriedly uh, 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 met and, and uh, gave the approval that is required for the constitutional deployment of the military. So. So since then, we've seen, especially on Thursday, the presence of the Kenya Defense Forces together with the parliament, uh, together with the police in, in the city. The army, unlike the police, have been much more reserved in relationship with uh, the, the protesters. They were not violent in any way. They've been able to maintain uh, peace. On the other hand, uh, we've seen uh, engagement between the protesters and the police in a place called Rongai, which is neighborhood of Nairobi, in Gidurai, where there were also claims of deaths that were that that, that had occurred, so there's this relative stability uh, in most parts of the city. If you are to go to uh, CBD today, the central business of Nairobi, it's quite peaceful. There are no presence of the police, except in around the critical infrastructure like the parliament, the Supreme Court, and so on. So it's a really relative calm. But being being um, Tuesday next Tuesday tomorrow, there might be uh, incidents of protest. So. We might see the engagement again between the police and the protesters being much more pronounced tomorrow. Mm. Well, one of President Ruto's campaign promises was not to rate taxes. Well, that has eventually happened. What is the current sentiment about President Ruto at this time? 
Yes, uh, if one is to reflect on 2021, 2022 campaigns, uh, the current president, uh, William Ruto, moved a very poor, a class kind of uh, ideology as far as voter uh, mobilization is concerned. So he came, he, he, he drew himself as a as the spokesman of the hustler, of the common man, of the common woman, of the market people, of the uh, motorcycle riders. And he promised that he's going to reduce uh, food prices, he's going to work on fuel prices, he's going to ensure that there is money in the pocket of the, of, of the citizen. Then, of course, the campaign vis-a-vis -vis the actual uh, performance of governments are often different. So when he came into power, he already... Uh, came to an economy that is extremely dilapidated with huge amount of uh, foreign dates, uh, odds to uh, IMF, to in, uh, specific countries like China and others. So he had to ensure that the debt payment has to continue, despite the fact that he inherited uh, quite a dilapidated economy. So what he immediately did was, how can we continuously again uh, oblige to pay our sovereign debt that we owe to others? Therefore, all his campaign promise of working on a proper policy approach had to take an about turn. So he had to start increasing the taxes in the finance bill 2022, 2023. So it's, it looks like a, 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 that, that for, for the common people who had voted for him, they felt that what he stood for before he came to power and what he's doing after he came to power are quite different thing. And I think one must realistically look at the kind of economic situation that he had inherited from the previous government in order to understand the kind of challenges that he faced in ensuring that he does what he promised to do. Therefore, people tend to look at the general public, especially the youth tend to look at uh, a sense of betrayal, uh, as a, a picture of a person who is not keeping uh, his his word as far as the campaign promises are concerned, and they do not have that patience or the luxury of waiting for the economic policies that the government is proposing to have that immediate impact. So for immediate reasons, people want to see the price of bread coming down. They want to see taxes being less. They want to see uh, the poor policy that the government had proposed coming into, 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 into perspective. But the exact opposite picture is re, uh, reenacting itself. Despite the fact that there's huge amount of revenue that is being collected, they do not feel that that revenue has been used for purpose of uh, infrastructure development, for purpose of service delivery, whether it's education or health and so on. So we are dealing with, um, with, that, with, with an electorate that feels betrayed. And that's the anger that is putting much, much number of people on the streets. Mm. So let's look at the ripple effect of these protests across sectors like economy, security, public trust. How would this be rebuilt along the line to get back a little bit of a steady, you know, government and economy that, as it was before these protests? So, um, so if one is to compare what will happen now, given uh, going forward, especially the fact that the government has pulled back the the, the bill, uh, the government has to do. Uh, extensive level of restructuring of its expenses. For instance, the president had already promised that the allocations that have been done to the to the spouses of of the president, to the spouse of deputy president, to the spouse of the uh, the, the, the first uh, cabinet uh, secretary, this restructuring, if it's done across all the sectors, then quite a number of uh, money will be available for other expenses in in health and others. So again, the government has to think on how do we restructure also our date because the dates that are owed to others uh, can be renegotiated. If if the if 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 government gets into a very constructive discussion with international monetary funds, with also individual countries that had lent money to the country, then chances are that uh, we can get a very favorable uh, way of addressing the deficit that the government is going to, to, to face. But I think the last address that the president did to press last night, uh, where he demonstrated that to, cut, to, to try to address the deficit, we might still need to look back to international monetary fund, and other uh, world bank institutions such as world bank so that they can get, so that the government can get uh, new loans then again this will just increase the amount of sovereign sovereign loans that the country owes and uh, with the inflation in, in 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 exchange rate then chances of again the same debt crisis being being faced might might be a situation that Kenya might look at in the coming uh, years especially in long term uh, perspective Dr. Wario, it's been a pleasure having you on the show this morning. Thank you for coming and sharing those updates with us. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. You're most welcome. Thank you.
All right, the program is Global Digest, and we have been looking at the series of protests that have been taking place in Kenya. And we're speaking to, to Dr. Halkano Wario. He is from the Department of, uh, from the Institute of Security Studies in Nairobi.